A very good evening. I'm Aditi Lamba with the Thursday night edition of South Asian News, Vision of Asia. We are coming to you from our studio in New Jersey. Welcome to the show. Let's begin the episode taking a look at the coronavirus pandemic updates as well as measures. The world is at more than 272 million COVID-19 cases and more than 5 million deaths. The European Union has stated that new concerning Omicron variant of the coronavirus is projected to become the dominant variant surpassing Delta by early months of next year. The World Health Organization has warned that the Omicron poses a very high risk, but data on its severity is still limited. Focus for the European Union now is to vaccinate the entire bloc battling surges from Omicron. In fact, the EU recently recommended that a booster dose of Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine may be given at least two months after the initial dose and it may also be given after two doses of the vaccine from Pfizer or Moderna, suggesting mixing vaccines if needed. Here in the United States, we are at more than 50 million cases of the coronavirus and more than 800,000 deaths. If you have not gotten your COVID-19 vaccine or your booster dose, please do so. You can visit vaccines.gov for more information. Our entire team also encourages all our viewers to wear masks indoors when needed. We have to add more on this along with politics and South Asian artists. Let's now take a look at the headlines coming in. Dr. Dina Adimulam urges all to get COVID-19 booster dose, New York. South Asians of New York present ideas that have impact virtual session. Indo-American Arts Council presents Literary Festival 2021. On coronavirus updates, experts across the nation are pleading Americans to get vaccinated with the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine or get the booster dose if they're eligible. Booster and first doses go hand in hand as a strategy for the government to stop the spread of the coronavirus. The CDC has indicated that the new concerning Omicron variant of the coronavirus is more transmissible and is also multiplying at a rate much faster than other variants. However, the Delta variant still continues to cause most number of infections and deaths in the nation. The only way to protect is through vaccination. So again, Go to vaccines.gov for more information and get your vaccine. Meanwhile, a U.S. appeals court has revived the Biden administration's vaccine mandate for healthcare workers in 26 states. The government argues that vaccine mandate would save a lot more lives and bring the needed protection we all need from the coronavirus. On this and much more, we have now our conversation with Dr. Dina Adimulam. Here is Dr. Adimulam. And when we are looking at South Asians at high risk, and a lot of South Asians have a lot of comorbidities that really impact the immune system, how important is it for them to get the booster dose? It's extremely important to consider getting the booster dose, especially if you're high risk. As you know, many South Asians are living with underlying medical conditions like diabetes and heart disease, which really put them at risk for potentially having severe COVID-19 infection or even dying of COVID-19. So we have this really effective and powerful tool to help prevent hospitalization deaths in the form of a vaccination. So it's extremely important to consider getting vaccinated to prevent death or severe infection. And vaccines.gov is the website where people can go and find information. News coming from South Africa on this uh, Omicron variant, doctor, and the vaccine efficacy. They're saying that two doses of Pfizer may not be enough to protect against Omicron. Um, and they're also saying that the booster will add additional protection. How are you looking at that? And are these vaccines going to be eventually effective against Omicron? I think that's my question, yeah. So 
So we have some preliminary data that's come out of South Africa. Um, the first thing that is important to remember is that this is lab data. So they're actually using the serum of individuals and looking whether or not they are having antibody responses to the booster and the vaccine. This hasn't been looked at in the real world population yet, but those studies are sort of ongoing now. But we can sort of extrapolate information from looking at this laboratory data to say that it looks as if the booster dose, the Pfizer booster dose at least, um, provides us with some additional protection against the Omicron variant. It looks like those that had, sorry, in the CIRA, from what they can see from those that had received a booster, a booster dose, there's a 25-fold increase in the antibodies against the Omicron variant. And this wasn't so substantial when they looked at the CIRA and those that just received the Pfizer two-dose vaccination series. It's also important to note that they believe there's still that 95% protection against severe hospitalization and death um, from the Omicron variant um, when you have received the Pfizer booster shot. So this is all really reassuring. Um, it makes me more compelled to tell my patients um, that they need to get the booster vaccine um, because we know then that there's some more um, possibility for protection against the Omicron variant that you would get from just having had just two doses of the vaccine in the preliminary series. Doctor, why is this Omicron variant more transmissible? The CDC director, Dr. Rochelle Wolanski, actually stated that today, that it's more transmissible and will become, um, you know, a greater concern in the next coming weeks. Why is it um, so transmissible? So it appears that there are certain mutations of the Omicron variant that make it more transmissible. It has certain features that are similar to the Delta variant, which made the Delta variant more transmissible in addition to some other mutations that are a little bit more concerning. This is why it's a variant of concern. It seems, again, that we have to extrapolate a lot of data from other countries of what's going on, yeah. but it appears in areas like South Africa, for example, there's a significant um, transmission that's happening right now with a significant number of cases just over the past one month. Yeah, so again, you know, we are discussing the importance of vaccine on the show today and the booster dose. This brings me to a million dollar question that everybody is always asking in regards to vaccines. Are we going to have to take a vaccine every six to seven months because that is what the trend seems to be like? I think we just, at this time, you know, there's just not enough data to know exactly how the frequency of this uh, dosing will be. Um, I think that a lot of health experts are believing that there's probably going to be at least a yearly dosing of vaccination similar to the flu vaccine, just to keep up with the number of variants that exist in the population. But of course, only time will tell. You know, as more and more people get vaccinated, there's a possibility for less mutants and less variants to be created. And if that occurs, then maybe we might have enough protection from the vaccine on hand to not necessarily need to have such frequency in dosing. But this virus can mutate. Yes. It's possible that that can happen again. Yes, and, and that's that. what we're seeing with the variants of concern. Right. So that's why it's important, again, to get the booster dose. Let's now talk about vaccines amongst children. Doctor, it's a big question of concern for parents all across the nation. We're seeing slightly low rates of vaccinations amongst children, especially from the age group of 5 to 11. There's a lot of misinformation about the vaccine also given. Now, how do you address it to the parents? And there is a risk of the a heart inflammation as a side effect from the COVID-19 vaccine in children. How are you addressing that? So I, I'm a mother myself um, and, you know, I have two young children that are under the age of five. They can't get vaccinated, but I have always been, you know, a real advocate for this vaccination, especially when you follow the data. So there is data that has that many people can even look into, um, looking at these populations of children that have been studied in these clinical trials. And there's tens of thousands of kids that have been given this vaccination to show that it is safe and it is effective. The heart inflammation that you're that you're alluding to is a condition called um, inflammation around uh, the heart or pericarditis, myocarditis, and that is something that's extremely rare. We don't know if that's an actual side effect related to the vaccination versus a child potentially being um, predisposed to having one of those sort of symptoms um, previously. So it's hard to say that that came because of the vaccination, but health experts believe that that is not a side effect of the vaccine.
Let's now take a look at the South Asians of New York nonprofit organization dedicated to politics and policy work and the impact of that on South Asian Americans. Recently, South Asian of New York hosted a virtual session titled Ideas That Have Impact, a take on gun violence, safer businesses, and safer communities. The event saw elected officials, community leaders, law enforcement officers, and academia who came together to reflect upon their perspectives and understanding of the issues. Gun violence is rampant in this country right now, bringing forth much needed attention on the need for gun control and other measures. The virtual event discussed this and facilitated ideas that have a positive impact on creating safer businesses and safer communities. Ideas that have impact session also highlighted modern technology, such as artificial intelligence to potentially prevent, protect, and save lives. The event saw in support ITV Gold's chairman, Padmashi Dr. Sudeep Parikh. Here is the story. Gun violence is not a natural calamity like hurricane or earthquake. It's not a viral epidemic either. This is a man-made problem and man has to find a cure for this. Uh, gun violence is problem for all, but there are certain uh, jobs which are more vulnerable for violence. South Asians of New York uh, are engaged in some of such jobs, such as gas station, taxi drivers, convenience stores, and so on. We all talk about COVID, but children and teens are more likely to die from gunfire than COVID-19 today in the United States of America. So this is a real problem. Uh, usually children are more affected, boys are more affected, and African-Americans are more affected. Uh, we have few elected officials, so probably we like to hear from them uh, what are the solutions they have and what can we do. Um, Obviously, we know that gun violence is something that's not unique to one city in New York. Uh, it's, not, it's not even unique to the state of New York. Uh, this is a national and global uh, epidemic or pandemic. Uh, but the question is, what can we do about it here? What can we do in New York? So I am one of 63 senators in the state of New York. I'm in a majority, the Senate Democratic majority. And just this morning, we announced a new piece of legislation, which I'm very pleased about. Yeah. This legislation is modeled after legislation in the states of California, in Oregon, in Rhode Island, that would create a short uh, waiting period when purchasing a firearm in New York State. As your Lieutenant Governor, I am working very closely with Governor Kathy Hochul to do everything I can to work with her to end gun violence in New York State. Earlier this year, New York declared a first in the nation gun violence disaster emergency, which was part of a comprehensive strategy to address gun violence. This strategy treats gun violence as a public health crisis and focuses on both short term and long term solutions to manage the immediate crisis, reduce the shooting rate and enhance community based intervention and prevention strategies. We know that we won't be able to solve the underlying issues that lead to gun violence unless we provide funding to key community groups for employment as well as local engagement. And so this disaster emergency allows us to expedite the disbursement of money and resources to communities so that they can begin to target the root causes of gun violence immediately. Uh, it is a very timely subject that the community and all of you have gotten together to discuss and look for solutions. We also have to be mindful that, you know, we are living in very difficult times because of the pandemic. This sort of situation comes, has come, I would say rather, after 100 years, you know, 1918 was a big pandemic and thereafter. So one has to be mindful of that. There are a lot of stress and strains, a lot of pressure in the society. And that also leads to violence in various forms, gun violence being one, and various other forms of violence that needs to be tackled with introspection, with understanding, with mutual support, holding each other's hand. I think we can put this 
unwanted violence that has crept in and not just here in the United States, I guess it's a pressure point across the world where people are feeling the heat of the pandemic. We can do it together. Let us come together. Let us understand each other together. Be more kind, compassionate to the problems that we have. And as a society, let us build a more harmonious network. When you lose somebody, loved ones, it's not be explained. Mother can lose the child, the wife can lose the husband, and that is not intentionally you killed. Unintentionally they are killed. And now these days you are scared. You cannot send the child to the school to find out whether the child will be back safe home or not. You go to the shopping center mall, you don't know when you will be attacked, either parking lot or in the shopping mall. When you go to the bank, you don't know whether you will be attacked or not. So you can see every step, your life is not safe. Who made the unsafe life? We made it. We are responsible. Nobody is responsible. We made it. We can solve it. So gun so, violence is not going to go away. We all have to be vigilant. We have to have multiple uh, sessions of conversations because in the United States Constitution, the Second Amendment gives you the right to bear arms, which means you can have a gun legally. However, when the founding forefathers did that as an amendment, they were talking about, about not being oppressed by any tyrannical force. They were not thinking about gun violence of everyday people shooting each other. So the, the social situations that we face today did not exist then. So it has evolved. Although we need to honor our constitutional right, we also need to protect in this social circumstance, in this time period, violence against young children, all children, adults, and so forth. So I applaud Mr. Shah Jahan Merchant for taking the time to do something that will do so much good for all people, uh, particularly in this issue of reducing gun violence. We have now another segment of the very successful Literary Festival of 2021 presented by the Indo-American Arts Council. The festival, which lasted for over a week, celebrated diversity in literature influenced by the Indian subcontinent and its people. The festival annually prides itself in featuring international best-selling and award-winning authors and this year was no surprise. The festival paid homage to the principle that stories unite us and are forever. Featuring both debut authors and established voices, the literary festival surely plays a spotlight on various subjects including a look into creative lives of beloved writers and authors. We were present at the concluding in-person event produced by the Indo-American Arts Council, which featured renowned Indian-American actor, writer, and producer Carl Penn, whose new book is gaining national attention. Here are some highlights from Indo-American Arts Council's literary festival of this year. How does it feel to have such a successful event and have such amazing artists all come out together to just support each other? This, is, this has been a great uh, event today. It's a celebration, it's the community coming together to mark the finale sort of for the IAC Literary Festival which we did over this whole week. So we started off on December 4th with an in-person event and uh, went all week virtual and we had amazing, amazing authors uh, attending and yesterday we had our Children's Lit Festival and today with Carl Penn coming in uh, and we had Serena and Mel join him as moderators, I think it went, uh, it was the best session. There was fun, there was laughter, there was engaging conversation, thought-provoking sentences, I think it, it had everything. To be about the Indian American Arts Council, what is coming up next? Where do you want the most support? How do you want the audience to interact, get involved? Let us you know, know that information. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We are on uh, our website, www.iaac.us, and uh, we are also on Facebook at iaac.us. 
So go find us there. And uh, you know, we always have events going on. We have our Erasing Borders Dance Festival, the New York Indian Film Festival, the Literature Festival, the Music Festival. All, all of these are online, our annual events that we do. And then we are partnering with the Consul General of India in New York here uh, for a year-long celebration of the India's 75 years of Indian independence. Oh, yeah. And uh, we will be marking it with a very grand gala celebration in August. Uh, we're thinking we'll have music concerts at, uh, I, I don't want to name names, yeah. but biggest artists that you can find in music, television, film, art, literature. Wow. It's going to be a 10-day festival, and we'll have the, one of the, some of the biggest venues in the city. So it's all coming together. I'm so excited for it. And joining us right now is Trisha Sakuja-Valia from Brown Girl Magazine. Trisha, you are here supporting all these artists that have come together and the Inter-American Arts Council. How does it feel to be here, and what does Brown Girl Magazine have to say about this event? I'm excited, so excited to support Melanie, Serena, Calpen tonight. It's such a beautiful way to celebrate their new movie, Hot Mess Holiday, and Calpen's new book. So it's just, a, it's just amazing to be a part of the movement, and I'm grateful. How does it feel, Sam? You know, you've gotten so much love from the community. Um, we've had you on the network before. We've talked about things that you're passionate about. How does it feel now to just get that fulfillment in the end, you know? You know, it, it feels great great and it's an exciting moment one because Edison has the largest Amer uh, Indian American population by percentage in the entire United States of America. Uh, Edison is widely known as the heartbeat of the Indian community uh, in the U.S. and it's really placed in a theme of what we're here for tonight uh, with Cal Penn, Melanie and uh, Serena, it was it was a wonderful event. Thank you. you have come here to support this wonderful event with Carl Penn and Serena and Melanie. How does it feel to be here and what do you have to say about this level of representation that we felt tonight? It is amazing to see Serena and Mel's um, friendship with Cal Penn. When they hosted him, we felt like we were included in their friendship and in their chat. It was very casual, it was very comfortable, and I think we got some tidbits that we wouldn't have otherwise gotten, which yeah. was really fun. Um, it's amazing, you know, I, I co-hosted with Brown Girl Magazine um, an event for Melanie and Serena last night yes. as we celebrated the premiere of their movie, Hot Mess Holiday, mm -hmm. and it was just amazing to for me to host them and to have a question and answer with them today to hear more about the experience to see two women like that really embrace their friendship and really bring that theme and the volley to our screens is so powerful and then to see them work with Cal as he's so busy on so many projects including this book um, it's been such a treat and today was such a wonderful evening and joining us from Bravo's family karma we have with us Anisha and Dylan thank you so much for giving us your time on ITV gold I would love to know what you have felt about the event today and why you chose to support it I think it was a great event to support, you know, people in the industry and the arts and what a great way to come together to share Culpin's new book with Serena and Mel. I mean, it was a wonderful evening. It's wild to see such little representation of South Asians yeah. in media growing up Agreed. and now to have a room full of artists and like a panel like this is probably something we Maybe. never expected to see. And they're all brilliant. Everyone's brilliant and talented. I love that you just casually throw in like, oh, like went to Stanford, got yeah. her engineering degree, I'm an like engineer. worked yeah. in the White House, exactly. like brought the first Diwali right. to the White House, and we're like, oh, that's not even what anyone knows these people for. Yeah. No. It's like a side note on their like biography it's of like excellence. White Castle. With this, we wrap up our show for the night. Please send us your suggestions and get your voices and organizations on our show. You can email us on events at itvgold.com or follow us on our Facebook handle. At ITV Gold, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel for free access to many of our popular shows. Thank you for joining us tonight from Edison, New Jersey. This is Vision of Asia, and I am Aditi Lamba. Take care and be well.